Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Living in Faith Everyday Podcast, the Life Podcast. And we're well on our way through the series I've entitled 66 Books. These 66 short podcasts take a quick overview of the 66 books of our Bible. And today you've reached the book of 2 Peter, the book of the second coming of Christ. Second Peter is a short, concise book of the Bible, yet still it is viewed by many as one of the most controversial books in the New Testament. So who wrote this letter? Well, the letter itself bears testimony to Peter's authorship. It claims to be written by someone called Simon Peter within the text itself. That's 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. It also identifies itself as his second letter. So who was the letter written to? Who were the recipients? If 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 1 is referring to 1 Peter by saying it's the second letter, and most agree that that is the case, 2 Peter then was obviously written after 1 Peter, and we know that that was written in AD 64. If Peter was still alive in AD 67 when Paul, we know, wrote 2 Timothy, it seems very likely that Paul would have mentioned him. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 14 seems to indicate that the letter was written just prior to his death, so probably around 64-65 AD. 2 Peter 3 verse 1 also seems to suggest that Peter was addressing readers in Asia Minor, just as he had done in 1 Peter, although the more open greeting at the beginning of 2 Peter perhaps might allow for the fact that he had an even wider audience. The occasion of this letter, what caused it to be written, was the false teachers who were appearing and would continue to appear in the church, in the community of faith. They will deny the second coming of Christ, he says in in chapter 3 verse 4, and live lustful lives, he tells us in chapter 3, 3, and they will even lead believers astray, we are warned in 2 Peter 2 verse 14. These false teachers, you see, deny the Lord, we are told they are bold in their irreverence, and they scoff at the very promise of the Lord's return. He warns us that they will live immoral lives in 2.13, and that their purpose is to seduce unstable souls. And by the way they live their lives, they cause the way of the truth to be denied. They make great promises of freedom, but yet he tells us they are still slaves to sin in 2.19. They will be disobedient to established authority, And it is apparent that these false teachers are already at work in certain places. Peter points this out for us several times in chapter 2. But he has a prophetic insight here. And Peter recognised that this evil would become more and more widespread within the community of Christian believers. So what is the message of this book? Well, the message of 2 Peter is primarily about the second coming of Christ. He talks about and describes the promise that Christ will indeed return. He talks about the coming of the Lord at both the beginning and the end of this book. He talks about how false teachers and scoffers will come and deny this truth and that their purpose will be to lead believers into a life of ungodliness. So the message is that in the light of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, believers should always avoid false teachers and try and live godly lives. The structure of 2 Peter is basically in the form of an ancient letter. It has an opening greeting, a salutation, then there is the main body of the letter, and then it closes with a benediction. Within the main body of the letter, there are three main sections. In chapter 1, he talks about God's power at work in believers. In chapter 2, he's warning against the false teachers. And then in chapter 3, he unpacks for us the significance of Christ's return. So what is the purpose of this book? Well, the main purpose of 2 Peter is to warn against those false teachers and scoffers, both in his day and in the future, which is our today. The false teachings that they bring 
seems to have included ideas that first appeared and became fully developed through church history in the Gnostic heresies in the second century. You see, these Gnostics were people who claimed to have higher spiritual knowledge, which led to a separation between belief and behaviour. They argued that their special secret knowledge placed them in a realm where the deeds of the body, the things they did, no longer affected the purity of their soul. Therefore, for people who possessed this higher knowledge, which they, of course, were the only ones who could impart, immoral practices were not seen as wrong. It is evident from the content that Peter here is meaning to warn believers because he's worried that they'll be led astray with the errors of these wicked people. Chapter 2 focuses entirely of warning us about these false teachers who walk according to the flesh, he says, and also, he says, they will despise authority. They are self-wills, he says in chapter 2, verse 10. They are wicked, he tells us in 2, verse 14, but they will be judged also, he reminds us. These heretics will use deceptive words to lead believers astray. That is their entire purpose. The secondary purpose of 2 Peter is to remind the people and to encourage them to take note so that they can grow in spiritual maturity. Peter is not claiming to tell them anything new here. He is just repeatedly reminding people to say, take note. He's telling them things that they already know. His purpose is to remind them and to encourage them to continue to seek godliness and by that spiritual growth. These two things are connected, he says. Resisting error will ensure godliness, holiness and growth. So in summary, Peter wrote the second epistle to the same audience as the first, but with a nod to a wider group of people, warning them and us against coming false teachers and people who would ridicule the truth of the gospel also to the remind them that since the Lord is returning that we should all live godly lives. In light of the return of the Lord, believers should avoid false teachers, live godly lives and know in their heart that Christ will return.